You're listening to Listen More with Paige Crystal Wilcox. This is a podcast where I listen to people from around the world who offer their insights, reflections, and suggestions on media representation. Something that's important for this podcast as a sign of respect is to allow each guest to introduce themselves in the way that they see fit. So without further ado, could you please introduce yourself to our audience and let them know a little bit about what you do? Hi, thank you, Paige. So really, really thankful that you invited uh, me for this podcast. And also, I'm very, very um, happy and really like your work as well. Uh, I think it's important with your openness um, and, and bringing those topics um, into the limelight. So I'm Jason Chang, and um, I'm basically living in the Netherlands now. Um, however, I consider myself a global citizen. Um, I was origin- originally born in Singapore to a dad who worked with a Japanese company and my mom worked with an American company. So, and Singapore being very diverse, um, I sort of grew up in a very colorful background. I, I often wondered uh, who I am as a person. When I started to play with my mom's uh, kids, um, the, the colleagues' kids, then I started to see like, hey, the world is so different and I'm just a small drop in the ocean. Um, afterwards, I then studied in the UK, worked a bit in South Africa, and afterwards I'm, I landed up in the Netherlands. So in this thread of all that I do, it's always been about diversity and in- inclusion. I've always seen like the world, yes, it's very diverse. It's very different um, between different people. However, I always thought then what's the inclusion part? How do we bring people together? How do we create a sense of belonging? And that's uh, very important for me. Um, Whilst we do not need to agree with many things, I think it's important that, yes, we feel included and we feel safe in a very conducive environment for our thoughts to be aired. So that's a bit about me. And uh, yeah, I continue my work in diversity and inclusion. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that introduction. And it is fantastic to have you here. Some context for the audience is this is the second time that we are chatting as the first, well, we have chatted a few times now and I meant to record the last one, but I had a little, uh, a bit of a brain malfunction and didn't hit record until after we finished. And the reason I say that is because it will make this next thing make sense. I'm really excited to hear some food metaphors that I'm hoping you're going to use throughout this conversation. So just a little taster for the audience there in terms of this podcast. What type of media is it that you would like to focus on? Yes, um, thank you, Paige. And <laughs> I hope um, maybe... If if some if uh, for those who are listening, then it's probably good if you brought some popcorn or some food, <laughs> some snacks um, for, for your listening. With regards to today's uh, podcast, I'll be talking a lot about um, more on film media and social media as well. It's something huge in our lives, and the fact that it's so in your face um, makes it really important in terms of how we treat it, and not only how we treat it, but also the impact of how that is perceived on the other side. I think it's always important to see it as a form of relationship. And I'll be touching on these, uh, these forms of media today. Let's go all the way back to your childhood. What was your relationship with media at that time? Did you see yourself or people like you reflected in media? And did that have an impact on you and how people behaved towards you? I'm 31 years old now. Um, next week is actually my birthday. So back then we didn't have social media and perhaps things were slightly slower um, in, in, in a sense of technology. Um, however, you still had film, you still saw things on the television and these things happen really quick and really fast at your face. I'm going to address the, the, the type of media today, but also in terms of the aspects, I would focus more on the culture and skin. Growing up in Singapore and afterwards in the UK, I used to see these sort of uh, images where it was very stereotypical in a sense. And that made me wonder if, am I properly represented? But I was also interested in how others perceived it. And what was interesting is that what I noticed is we tend to lose a lot of the context to things um, on screen. 
And I do see that more as well in social media now. So growing up, it was always important for me to really see identity as a core. So I think it's important to really, as I've grown, to try to see things like, okay, well, we have like a pizza. And with that pizza, yes, there uh, there is a taste that you sort of expect from it. Say, for example, the infamous um, Hawaiian pizza. People can debate if there are, we should put pineapples on it. But with the Hawaiian or with the pizza, the taste would always be different depending on the restaurant you go to, depending on the chef, depending on what ingredients you want to put on it. Maybe you don't want ham, you want salami on it. I have no idea. But it's important to, when looking at things in, in, on the television, in film and social media now, it's important to know that everybody has an, a form of identity that might not be so obvious and the context is needed. The context is needed it's like the pizza where you need to know who's behind that. And I think that's important. If the chef shows some love to the food, the food shows the love to you. And it's important in treating identity and what's on screen as well that way, that there is a person and that person is trying to say something. But of course, sometimes we lose the context and therefore it's important to really think twice how we should reflect uh, our thoughts towards it. I've actually got a pizza on the way, which is very exciting. It's pizza night in this house. Amazing. I'm actually going to have burger night today, I think. I haven't had burgers in a while. I'm going to have to add that soon. I'm just having a think now, a non-food related think. In terms of losing that context, do you have any ideas or thoughts around how you can get that context? Yeah, so basically I've uh, developed in my own work um, this Oreo approach. So we are not sponsored by Oreo in this, <laughs> but I got inspired by the cookie. Oreo is an acronym for outline for the O, then research for the R, explore for the E, and outcomes for the O. So I would go through it one by one in terms of how we can approach that. I, I know it could be difficult when we're looking at social media or at film and, and it's difficult to just rationally think through a uh, four-step process, but it's all often good to just remind ourselves how we can approach it. So I think, so the first one outline, it's basically, it's important to just understand the context to what we're looking at. It's important to really assess, hey, what medium is this? Um, how am I receiving it? to really understand the nature of things, both on a vertical level and a horizontal level. And with that, then it's important to, of course, collect the research when we, when we try to approach it. So, okay, we can't interact with film, for example, but perhaps social media would be useful. If we want to, say, reply to someone, maybe it's good to just check out their history to, to understand where they're coming from. Maybe someone's just frustrated or having a bad day. So it's really important to understand, do the research and not just, you know, jump straight to an instinct and reply to that. I think we've all been through a, a moment where retype our emails because um, we, we it didn't sound so nice. So that's the research part. So it's really important to do that. Then afterwards, it's important to really explore. So, so when we are having, eventually we have the discussion on social media, for example, then really try to explore it try to understand and keep an open mind to it rather than, hey, like uh, this is fixed. This is my opinion. And, uh, and we have no, there's nothing black and white. It's, it's really important to really explore. Go, to, go towards it like you're, you're swimming in the sea and you, you just want to see something. Yeah, maybe a boat, a fish. I'm, I'm not sure what, but it's good to explore. And finally, look at the outcomes. Like uh, have you maybe perhaps inspired someone's day? Has maybe watching a film uh, inspired your day um, and, and that's really important always and think of that as circular as well the entire process like the oreo don't try to think in terms of a square we feed back into a system and we feed back into someone's lives uh, life and therefore it's good to think in a circle I, and i think some of the best food in the world are circles like pizza burgers oreos yes i was gonna say all of these foods are are circles so that's Outline, research, explore, outcomes, Oreo. Something that I find very fascinating about social media 
is even though there, there's that missing context and it's shallower in a way, at the same time, it's so much more connected than an IRL conversation. So in real life, when you're able to read the room, there's not really any such thing as reading the room if your audience is potentially the entire world. Do you have any thoughts relating to that? Yeah, so I think that's a really good point. And that brings us, I think, to the intersectionality part. So I would assume that most people listening to this podcast are familiar with the term intersectionality, but could you explain it just in case there is someone new who is not yet familiar with that word? Yep, of course. So I think in simple terms, just think of, think of it as a cross junction, like you're, you're at a junction and it's a four-way street and you're trying to cross the road. So, so there are many factors in place. So just think of it in simple terms that say in a pizza, there are many things that are cross-sectional, many things that are happening, that are going on. And to characterize this in within the context of, say, social media, I would focus on two things. So one is behavior and one is the, uh, the structural part that constrains it. In looking at social media and that, okay, we're speaking to a whole world and how can we really approach that in a more empathetic manner? It's like thinking about a pizza again. Pizza has the flavor. It has, uh, it may be spicy. I don't know. It, uh, it could be sweet with the pineapples, et cetera. So it really gives that color to, to your taste buds. So think of that as behavior, like um, the, the pizza shows its taste, but the pizza doesn't just appear in front of you. It takes a team. It takes maybe one person, but it takes a whole supply chain to make that pizza, to, to, to get a pizza to the restaurant, uh, to your table. So that's the structure that really constrains the pizza's flavors. So the same way with, so, with social media, there is a structure that's in place. Like uh, if a politician were to make a statement, they are also constrained by, say, their own legal rules or their, their own policies to social media. And in the case of a pizza, then you get the chefs who are making it. Maybe they had a bad day, so your pizza is bad. But maybe the chef is showing some love then the pizza tastes amazing and perhaps you source ingredients from the local uh, bakery for the dough. Perhaps you source it from a nearby farm and therefore the ingredients fresh. Or maybe you just threw a can of pineapples in there and it tastes not so good. Basically, all these make up the, the, the essence of, say, a social media post or even just what we watch on television. And that's important to think about, that intersectionality, that Things are always at a cross junction, that it's not just I am speaking to this person on social media or this person is uh, playing this particular role on television and that person is that. No, they are constrained by things that perhaps we do not see immediately. And therefore, the context always matters that uh, it's important not to just jump and go, hey, like that person is that. Like, no, that's not the case. So, yeah, just think of it as a pizza. Nice flavor, and you want a backroom team that also delivers delivers that flavor. And I would say, yeah, that's how it is good to approach uh, social media as well. Gosh, I'm getting so hungry. I can't wait for the fire breather, and I hope that it has been made with love this evening. Something we haven't really spoken much about is your personal connection with how you have felt shaped or whether you have struggled to maybe fit into certain labels. Do you have any thoughts about, and, and this is, you know, either as an adult or throughout your life, how you relate to media now when it, I guess, is about you and your identity? Yes. So again, like uh, if we went back to, to your previous questions as well, like uh, it's important to know the context to many things, to know the, the kitchen that makes the pizza. And in a sense, it's funny because everywhere I go in the world, people tend to ask where I'm from. And normally my reply is I'm a global citizen. I don't wish to be put into the, an, a box from the nation state. I'm not very keen on that. And people are quite insistent to put me in that box. It, it doesn't help when sometimes I reply in different languages and people are like, no, I want to know where you're from. And uh, I, I think for me, it's always been conflicting. Like, should I 
just say where I'm from for convenience sake and really get it out of the way? Or should I say, well, I'm a global citizen. I come from this and that background. Maybe you have an extra 20 seconds to really listen to me, like, because this makes me. So in looking at these forms of media, um, I've always been very cautious because I, I come from Asia and I look in a certain way. And I'm also cautious about how people look at that. I think one of the ways for me that's important in, in, in terms of how I hope to shape um, people's perception is always, I think, using humor. I think that breaks, breaks a lot of, uh, it really makes the room loosen up that you can treat things as funny and witty. I, I read somewhere that adults smile something like only 13 or 14 times a day, whereas a baby smiles like eight, 80 times a day. And, and that got me going like, hey, how, how do we make it funny? Like uh, I have this whole background, but it's important to really feel yourself that, okay, well, I can't make everyone happy in the world. Maybe the pizza I made today wasn't uh, fit, for, fit for the customer. But hey, at least I could do something to really shape that, that, okay, maybe the taste isn't good. But then think again about the context. How can I make, say, this restaurant good for someone? How can I make the experience good? Um, and therefore, that was, that's always been what I've tried to do, at least with my social media. I have my own Instagram uh, accounts, but I've always thought, okay, well, I'll make something funny that, hey, this is me. I'm not very muscular. I'm not very... Uh, the good looking and then but hey let's just have fun with that like, that's cool like um some things don't need to be treated in a way that's uh really putting people in boxes but rather let's really treat things differently like no one thought the hawaiian pizza would be developed but hey look we have pineapples on a pizza now so let's go for it i really like i think this idea of having a bit more fun and smiling a bit more a bit more comedy I think definitely previously in my writing career, I felt that I had to write more about the traumatic things I faced and discrimination and things like that. And while a lot of those things did happen and it's important for people to know those stories, I definitely feel like I want to be listening to more positive stories and I really want to know more about what makes other people smile, what brings them joy, you know, what's their perfect pizza if it's a pizza. And I think what you're really saying is just so important. What you're really saying right now, essentially you have put someone's identity as, as its core. It's really nice to spread that optimism. I think I've always been also cautious, like it could also be toxic at the same time by if something's really bad and you try to be overly positive or enthusiastic, then it could come across as quite pretentious. What I've realized as well with language, um, the language, whether it's on social media, on film, or it comes from myself. Yes, everyone has that sort of freedom to, to be themselves and really showcase their, their colors. But when in moments when it could be a bit difficult for them, on social media, it could be difficult for someone when they air something that's perhaps more personal. Whilst we can't help and whilst it's easy to say, hey, it's your choice, it's uh, your freedom to do so. I think it's always nice to think, how can I help and shape this? How can I help and make that, if, even if I don't reply or don't do anything, how can I within my own space help and shape a better life for people around me? Um, and I think that gives more empowerment to yourself but also in influencing the dialogue that's happening out there. Sorry if you just heard my partner bringing the pizza in just then. I just jumped on the mute button, but I wasn't quick enough. We're getting towards the end of the episode now. So I'm wondering any other things you'd like to share with the audience about what you're planning, but also if you have any final advice or thoughts relating to media. Thank you, Paige. So, um, yes, so what I'm developing, uh, well, at, at the time of broadcast, I, I, I think, um, yeah, it will be out. And so it's a project of mine and it's called Inside Out. It's essentially a storytelling platform that showcases microaggressions pertaining to discrimination or exclusion. Again, relating back to, to what um, the entire podcast has been, uh, what we've been speaking about, essentially it's 
microaggressions are these moments where if you told, say, like the police, they would probably brush it off and say, well, you're making a big fuss out of something small. So what I've decided to look at is that the experiences of people, no matter how small they are, are often symptomatic of something bigger. Tiny drops of water make up the mighty ocean. Every pineapple makes up the whole Hawaiian pizza too. We didn't know that. Basically, through Inside Out, I want to showcase these situations and these experiences of people that they matter because no experience is unimportant. Nothing is unimportant in this world. It's, it's important to treat it, everyone's experience as unique because what is important for them may not be important for me, but at least I know that their experience is important and therefore I should take it seriously. And, and that is what I want to show with the, with the platform. People can contribute to it. You can drop me an email. Nothing is too small in this world. Like they, they all matter. And that's important the same way we treat social media that yes, may just be a text, but it means something else. It could mean something personal. It's always important to know the kitchen that makes the pizza. And I think we should always show that appreciation to people. So that's what I'm working on. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. I've enjoyed listening to your thoughts and your ideas. You've got so many cool things that I think are coming up. I'm excited to see how it all, all pans out. These sorts of conversations make me feel more positive about the future, really about when there's so many people, even if they're just doing something small, if it's good, that can make a great difference overall. Just as the microaggressions, lots of small things can have a very negative impact. We have the power to be a part of flipping that. So thank you so much for your contribution to that and to this podcast. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Paige. You're doing incredible work. And I really, really enjoy your, the openness and your curiosity. I think those are so important and just so refreshing to see. You've been listening to Listen More with Paige Crystal Wilcox. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on this podcast, head to my website, pagecrystalwilcox.com and don't forget to share and subscribe.